Back in the day, screenwriters were using character in their scripts that were written specifically for delivering exposition. Like a military dude, scientist, judge, or news reporter, it rarely works nowadays because the audience could see the undercover exposition coming from a mile away. When a writer uses a news footage device once, I'll let it go out of respect for Ghostbusters, but I'll get Bruce Bannerish when they wear it out like in Chappie when they use four separate news scenes, or in Robocop where they had three. Anyways, there's some illegal activity afoot, and robot cops arrive to the scene to save the day, but one of the side characters bazookas the mechanical cop, the bazooka control out deletes most of Chappie's torso, while Robocop gets up and he's all like, ha 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 ha, that tickled. The film takes place in a post-apocalyptic city under siege, where it's metallic cops versus robbers in a never-ending war. One city is a fictional version of Johannesburg, South Africa, and I'm being told the other is a realistic depiction of present-day Detroit. This is the same type of apocalypse that MJ warned us about, the kind where they're out to get you better leave while you can, the kind where you don't want to be a boy, you want to be a man. So every man gets a gun, but Dion pays for his, and they steal their guns over here. Side note, oh my god, how in the Hades do you get robbed at a gun store when you're supposed to have guns and bullets? To summarize our villain, the bad guy's this dude with a unique hairstyle where he asked the barber to leave a little hair in the back. Difference is, over here, dude also requested the barber take a lot off the top. You think the gangsters in this movie have the upper hand on the police because they have snitches working on the inside, but the gangsters over here have a reliable source, and the gangsters over there put their trust in a crackhead. Cut to a scene where a quote unquote mark new and improved mechanical robot presentation is taking place. Both projects are denied, but for different reasons. In Robocop 2, it's clearly because he keeps falling apart. And in Chappie, I think it's because no one trusts the creator Vincent, since he looks like he volunteers for a living. Moving along, guys, I want stronger roles in Hollywood for women more than the next woman, but I almost think this movie would've worked better if they took this stupid lady out of this all together. I mean, she's like Florida people stupid. In Chappie, you have a hard time believing someone with her judgment would ever get promoted enough times to be in charge. In Robocop 2, you totally buy it because you catch her in the middle of sleeping her way to the top. Later on, we find out that the bad guys receive their mail in the same abandoned facility. No trespassers allowed, but if you do decide to break and enter, you probably get a couple bullets to your physique in this movie, and in this one, they'll just challenge you to a paintball duel. Don't get me wrong, Robocop has Nick Jr. weapons sometimes too, but for kids. To me, it just looks awkward when adults use them. As we look around the bad boy headquarters, you kinda like what they've done with the place, decoration-wise. In Chappie, it's obvious all of their stuff were stolen. I'd never judge a book by its cover before I saw this movie. I mean, now, it seems perfectly okay to do so. Over here, you could tell that they paid for all of their stuff because the bad guy's lord and savior is Jesus Christ, so thou should not steal or whatever. Religion aside, if we're talking about who's the most ruthless villain, I pick Kane by a couple of centimeters. There's this guy that double crosses him, and Kane schedules his open heart surgery he never asked for. Someone double crosses Ninja too, and you see an example of how forgiving he is when he picks up the phone for him on the first ring in the very next scene. I've always been more of a hug life than thug life kind of guy myself, so I see where they're coming from. You could really get hurt in these streets. Exhibit A, the robot's arm gets sawed off, then they assemble a team of advanced scientists and researchers to make Robocop better than before, and they go to Walmart and get some duct tape for Chappie. Following their reprogramming, something happens and Chappie's feminine side goes MIA, and just the opposite happens to Murphy as he shows different instances on how he's too polite to get the job done. Both robots are the same in the fact that Chappie and Murphy make conscious efforts not to shoot anyone. Chappie uses Ninja Turtle weapons as an alternative, but Murphy finds a way to use his firearm without anyone getting hurt. True fact, everybody's got a little bit of thug in them, so they both get tattoos. One does it for cool points, the other has it done to him as a victim of a hate crime. Later on, Chappie starts helping the criminals Grand Theft Auto some cars. Robocop does it too, but two things. One, it's a bike. And two, when he does it, the driver totally deserved it. After this, the cops are on strike because of A, their direct deposits keep getting funnier every week, and B, they're all infected with malware. So now would be a perfect time to commit felonies or higher. Which brings me to my next point, warning. The following contains footage that may be disturbing for some of our viewers. Okay, so there's this part where this cop is heard in the line of duty, and it's semi-funny, but put yourself in his shoes, right? You can't really trust robots, because it was a robot that gave you your body piercing in the first place, and you can't really trust a human, because when one of them has a chance to shoot the dude who's shooting you, they hesitate for like a good 11 seconds and give the criminal a chance to finish the job. So you're screwed no matter who you make friends with then. But I digress. Now because all the city violence, the lady approves the robot from the beginning that had problems passing inspection to go out into the field. The robot is powered by a human brain in the literal sense in one version and in the other, it's more of a figuratively speaking kind of thing. Meanwhile at the business meeting with the gangsters, they're discussing the origins of this trunk full of money and then they're interrupted by the giant robot. It's all fun and games until the one girl dies. The boyfriend and Chappie is super pissed while the boyfriend 
Captain and Robocop is super happy because he's the one that killed her. Then we go back to the company headquarters for a final showdown between the good guy and the villain. Ed 209 has the advantage for a majority of the fight and knocks Robocop through the wall. It's the other way around for Chappie and he's the one who knocks. One minus one of the innocent civilians die here because they were all smart enough to run in the opposite direction. Everybody here comes in for a closer look for the Robocop beatdown, which explains why the insurance company refuses to cover the damages for the voluntary casualties. In the end, Robocop kills Ed 209 by turning him into a this is your brain on drugs PSA and Chappie turns Vincent into the letter K but lets him live to see another day. And those are 24 reasons these movies are different so truth or dare, like and share, leave a comment under there. If you don't, that's not fair. This thing took a week to prepare. But I'm not a rapper though. <gasps> Hey guys, this episode was brought to you by the folks at squarespace.com. When creating a website, you have to remember it's an extension of your brand, so you only really get like one first impression. With squarespace.com, your site could look professionally designed regardless of your skill level. Their software is easy to use and is trusted by millions of people, such as HBO, Target, and Cough Cough Cinema Sense. I could give you 24 reasons why this is a no-brainer, but that'll probably take too long for no reason, especially when I could sum it up for you perfectly with one reason. Use this offer code and you get to start your free trial today. And actually, since the trial is free, you'd have to be dumb not to do it, which is why I think they call it freedom in the first place. But boom, boom. And when you do decide to sign up, you get 10% off your first purchase at squarespace.com slash couch tomato. I'd buy that for a dollar. Aha, you see what I did there. Thank you and good night.